They're called hostess bars, places where Japanese men shell out hundreds of dollars for the right to buy drinks for beautiful, usually foreign women. Welcome to Coco Bongo. Veronica. Hello. Hostess here at Coco Bongo. Now, where are you from originally? I'm from the Czech Republic. The Czech Republic. But you must speak pretty good Japanese to be able to be a hostess here. Uh, not really. Uh, no. Basic Japanese is enough. Why do you think appeals to guys that come to a hostess bar like this? It's a place where they can talk to girls, dance it, or listen to the music, and also they can drink. No hanky-panky, there's no stripping involved. When the customer comes here, he knows it's only a hostess club. He can only talk and drink with a girl. Where's the dance floor here? Usually, I dance on the counter over there. How expensive is it for a guy to come in here? You pay like an entrance fee for the first one hour you're here. Yep. Then for every half an hour, you pay some admission. Also, you can request the girl or take her for dinner. So that's extra fee for that. We are working till four o'clock in the morning. Sort of a strange life in a way, isn't it? Yes, yeah, sometimes I feel like a vampire. <laughs> I gotta figure it's pretty good money. We have a fixed salary and uh, if the customer wish to tip, give you some tip or buy you a present, he can. What's the average take a night? 50,000 yen or? 50,000 yen. That's roughly $400 plus free drinks. Pretty good for a little conversation and a dance or two. Ah, delicious Japanese cuisine, just aching to be tasted. But look closer and you'll see that these are examples of the thriving Japanese art of food replication. It seems the locals have always wanted to see in advance what they're ordering. And foreign visitors who couldn't order in Japanese wanted to just point. There were obvious drawbacks to displaying real food in the window, so an ingenious entrepreneur came up with the plastic replica idea. And now it's a multi-million dollar industry, capable of duplicating any dish on the menu. So don't bite into that tempura, or you'll wind up with a mouthful of chipped teeth. Ryogoku Station is smack dab in the middle of sumo wrestling territory. The main arena is near here, as are many of the stables where wrestlers train for their upcoming matches. We had arranged a visit to one such stable that was coached by former grand champion Akibono, all six foot eight, 520 pounds of him. Our guide would be his father-in-law, a retired American businessman from Indiana named Don Kalina. These guys are, they look heavy, which they are, but they're, they're muscle. I mean, these guys are like brick walls. The ring is made out of baked clay with, laced with cement. So there's not much down there when you're hitting. And uh, I've seen guys go out here in wheelchairs. And they're pulling on their tanks like that's gotta be painful. Oh yeah, yeah, the pain is nothing here. That's, that's part of the training, is pain. After the first round of sparring, the rankings of the stable's wrestlers were rearranged, a process that received considerable attention. Hitting and sliding and being tossed. I mean, it's, it's just an exercise. Yeah. All essential skills to being a sumo wrestler. That is true. Haki Bono is Hawaiian and was the first non-Japanese to become grand champion. He stayed champ for eight years, making him sort of the Michael Jordan of sumo. He's treated like royalty, and when he took a break to get his top knot retied, we saw an opportunity to interview a bona fide hero. What do people do when you walk down the street besides get the heck out of your way? <gasps> <laughs> what is the average meal of a sumo one of these guys? What, what, do, you, what do you eat in a day? Whatever you feel like. Whatever you feel like. The object is to get them out of the ring, right? Get those guys out of the ring. Yeah, basically. Or put them on the ground. Or put them on the ground. Right. There's certain techniques, obviously. There, there's certain things you do. You, you hit them, you go for the throat. You, does anything go? Is there any rules that you can't do? Uh, no pulling on the top knot, no gouging in the eyes, and uh, no close fist punches. 
Is the bigger guy always going to win, or does sometimes agility win out? Well, it's not always size. It's uh, speed. Most of the time, uh, the smaller guy tries to use the, the bigger guy's size against him. Do you think somebody like me could put enough weight on to become a wrestler? <laughs> no. <laughs> you start like this, right? You start all fours. Start on all fours. And then we get up. Okay, already I'm in trouble. Already, I don't like this. Of course, I, I wouldn't have a mic, would I? Say, put down your mic. I'll put that on. All right. Oh, okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> oh boy, it's like a wedgie. It really is. There we go. I gotta stop now. He's in trouble. Okay, that would be bad. <laughs> Well, there you have it. That's all the Tokyo we have time for. We didn't even get to show you Alcatraz, the dungeon restaurant that treats its patrons like convicts, or the blind acupuncturist who somehow knew exactly where to put his needles. But for now, it's Sayonara Tokyo and Domo Arigato for everything. Air transportation provided by ANA, All Nippon Airways. They're the ones.